So let's look at part C of illustrative example one. So it's quite a long section and it might seem very daunting, but after you've practiced this a couple of times, I guarantee you it will become easier. So just, um, just do it. You have to practice this, um, practice calculating these variances. And after a while you'll see um, it's the same process every time. And if you understand what you're doing, you can score a lot of marks with the variance calculations. So let's see. Calculate and analyze the following variances. And the way it's laid out is a bit funny. I don't like it too much. So, so let's just read through it. So the first one is total material variance. So that means the total difference between budgeted and actual. Uh, but when I say budgeted, I mean the flexible budget. So that's a total variance. So that means it includes the price and the quantity variance. Then the next one says material purchase price variance. So that's the first detailed variance. And then material quantity variance. So that's the next one. So the total material variance would be the, the purchase price variance and the quantity variance added together. And then number four asks you to illustrate that two and three equals one. So, so you see, it's, a, it's, it's asked in a very funny way. What you actually need to calculate is part two and three, material purchase price variance and the material quantity variance. And then you can simply add the two to get the total variance. Or you can work, uh, calculate the total variance first and then just add the two and check whether you do get to the total. So um, I'm just going to show you how to calculate the purchase price variance and the quantity variance. Next, then we have uh, the total labor variance. So again, the total variance is simply the flexible budget less the, the actual budget. And then the labor rate variance and the labor efficiency variance. So those two together will make up the total. And then they ask you, number eight, to illustrate that the labor rate and the labor efficiency variance adds up to the total. So you can check yourself that it does. But you'll see if we do it um, using that table, all of this will already be done um, on that one table. So that's why I'm not going to focus too much on illustrating that the two make up the total. And you'll get, I think it'll make, become clear when we do it. And then just to get to the other variances, so we, they want the variable manufacturing over it, rate variance, the variable manufacturing over it, efficiency variance, and then the variable selling and distribution cost expenditure variance, and the selling price variance. So all the items that I circled are the detailed variances that we need to calculate. All the other items are simply adding those for each cost element to make up the total. So it's just checking your calculations. So let's um, do this using that table method. You can do it using the calculations in the textbook to check whether you get the same results. And that's probably a, not a bad idea. But I'll illustrate the table since it saves a lot of time and it's much easier to see what you are doing. So we've got the actual values on the right hand side. We know we need the flexible budget on the left hand side. So remember flexible budget is the standards. So that standard cost card, but using the actual units produced, always actual units produced. Everything on this table takes into account the actual units produced. And in the middle we have that column called the actual quantity of input at standard. And our variances would be the price variance on the right hand side and then the quantity variance on the left hand side. Quantity variance would then be our efficiency variances for overheads and labor. And our price variance would be our rate variances for labor and overheads. So our first cost is the direct material. So let's see what's our... Um, I just lost my solution. Uh, there we go. So let's look at the information. We want the flexible budget value for direct materials. So what is flexible budget? That is the uh, budgeted, how much it should have been. Remember, flexible budget is the should have column. So I'll just write it there to remind us. Should have. How much should it have been? If we had known what the actual production were. So we produced 5,000 units. So that's important. That's actual units produced that we'll use in the table throughout. And how much should it have cost us for material to make 5,000? So 5,000 units times 
And there we have the cost per unit on the standard cost card. That's 14 times 14. So that would be 200,000. That's how much we should have spent on materials to make 5,000 units. So then we can write in the actual on the right hand side. So how much did we actually spend? We did calculate it earlier when we did the income statements, but our actual would be our 10,000 actual quantity times our actual price of 2250. So that's 10,000 kilograms. So we don't have to work in units. We can just calculate the actual value. So 2250 and that's 225,000. So that's the actual spend. So to answer their part one, which I'm not going to go through in detail for every single cost, but they asked for the total material variance. So the total material, material variance would be the difference between the flexible budget and the actual value. So that's 22,000 and it's unfavorable because we spent more than what we should have spent. Remember the should have spent is the flexible budget. But now they want us to split it between the quantity and the usage variance or the quantity, uh, the, uh, the quantity variance and the price variance. So we need this middle column, the actual quantity of input, which is 10,000 kilograms. We get that from the right hand side, from the actual, at the standard price. So our standard price, did they give that to us? So our standard price per kilogram, remember standard price refers to per kilogram not per unit so it's not the standard cost I just want to highlight this again so standard quantity that's in kilograms times standard price which is rand per kilogram equals standard cost so standard cost is not the same as standard price so we're working in kilograms actual quantity of input at standard price so the standard price would be this 25 per kilogram you can't multiply cost per unit by kilograms. It's cost per kilogram. So 25. So that gives us 250,000. And now we can calculate the variances. So the quantity variance would be 200,000 what we should have spent. And the 250 what we actually spent. So that's 50,000. And I'm going to put it in brackets because we overspend. It's an unfavorable variance. And then on the price side we should have spent 250,000 at the standard price but the actual price was less so we saved so that's a favorable variance 25,000 favorable okay let's see if we can do the same for the rest of the costs so next one is direct labor so the flexible budget let me just find my solution again there we go sorry for that jumping so flexible budget for labor. So we know we, we produced 5,000 units. How much should it have cost us? It should have cost us 32 per unit in total. Remember, that's cost per unit. So 5,000 times 32, and that's 160,000. And now to save time, we can do the flexible budget first because it's the same process over and over again. So the next cost was our variable manufacturing overheads. And we know it was 5,000 units. How much should it have cost us per unit? There we have it. Our standard cost card says it's six per unit. Remember, we're working in units, so we take the cost per unit. So times six, and that's 30,000 flexible budget. And then we can, what do we have there? Uh, they asked us for, was that the variable selling and distribution cost? So that's 14 per unit, and that's per unit sold because it's a selling expense. So variable selling and distribution, 5,000 units sold, that's the actual unit sold, times the, what is the cost per unit? 14. So times 14 and that's how much we should have spent on variable selling and, and distribution costs and that equates to 70,000 okay so let's uh, now do the actual column so we've done the flexible budget column we know what we should have spent now we're gonna put the values in that what we actually spent so for direct labor first Direct labor, we spent uh, 50 rand per hour for 3,000 hours. 
So 3,000 actual hours worked times 50 per hour. So that's 150,000. Next, we can do variable manufacturing overheads. I think that was just given. So variable manufacturing overheads was 25,000. Variable selling and distribution, um, 75. So we have 25,000 actual, 75 actual. So you can see how easy this is. If you use the table, you can do the flexible budget first for all the costs. Make sure that you use actual units produced. That's very important. If you don't do that, you're going to lose all your marks. Then on the actual column, you simply write in the values from the given information, which should be available to you. And now comes the tricky bit. We need to calculate the actual quantity of input at the standard price. So for labor, the actual quantity comes from the right hand side. So that's how 3000 hours actually worked. And the standard rate per hour should come from our standard cost card. The standard rate per labor hour, 40. There we go times 40 and that's 120,000 um, and now we can calculate the variances so labor we should have spent 160 we actually spent 120 so we save there's an efficiency variance that's favorable on the rate side the price variance we at the standard rate it should have been 120 but we actually spent 150 so that's 30,000 and it's unfavorable we spent too much the rate was higher it was 50 and it should have been 40 then variable manufacturing over it. So let's just stick here that it, it, the, for variable manufacturing over it, um, it varies with hours worked. And you can see it's the same hour, hours um, per unit as direct labor. So we use direct labor to allocate it. And the rate is, the standard rate is 750. Um, so we would have the same actual hours worked from labor times the standard rate of 750. That's 22,500. And again, we can simply now calculate the quantity variance or the efficiency variance. That's we should have spent 30,000. We actually spent less. So it's a favorable variance of 7,500. And then on the price side, so the rate variance or tariff variance, we should have spent 22,500 and we actually spent more. So this is a unfavorable price variance or rate variance. So now we've done all the variable manufacturing costs. Now we need to do the variable selling and distribution um, expense. And there they asked us only for the spending variance. If we look at this, the question, there's only one variance to ask for. It's the variable, uh, no, it's not that one, variable, uh, this is the manufacturing cost. So variable selling and distribution cost expenditure variance. So. It's only a spending variance, so that will be simply what we should have paid versus what we actually paid. So we actually paid, f uh, excuse me, we actually paid 5,000 more than what we should have paid. So it's an unfavorable variance. So it's simply, there's no uh, quantity variance here. Because, uh, yeah, so it's only a spending variance. And a spending variance is um, simply budgeted versus actual. Um, then they ask us for the selling price variance. So the selling price variance don't really go on the table, so I'll just make some space at the bottom. Okay, sales price variance. So remember the selling price variance, we isolate the selling price. So it's um, our actual selling price less our standard selling price multiplied by actual quantity sold so what was our actual selling price they didn't tell us what the selling price was but we know it would be the total sales 725,000 divided by 5,000 units actually sold that's the actual sales and that gives us a selling price of I'll have to use my calculator for that 145 per unit so that's the actual selling price 145 less the standard selling price so did they give us yes they gave us the standard selling price 140 so we know it's going to be a favorable variance why because we sold it for more than what we expected to sell it for 
and we still have to multiply by the actual units just to get the um, total value. So that would be 5 times 5,000, so 25,000. And it's a favorable variance because we sold the unit for more than what we expected to sell it for. So these are all the variances that they asked, for, uh, asked us to calculate. Um, the ones that I circled in black, the ones in between just ask us to illustrate that if you add the two, you get the total variance. And if you look at the table here, if you add the two um, material variances, so quantity and price, the total of that would add up to it's negative 50 plus 25, so that will give us negative 25,000, and that would be the difference of the flexible budget and the actual, so the total difference. And actual was higher than the flexible budget, so it must be negative. So you can see we actually did prove that if you add the quantity and price variance, we get the total variance of material. So um, it's unlikely that they'll ask you ask it like this. They'll probably only ask the circled ones, the actual detailed variances. And those are the ones that's important if we want to know what went wrong in the company. So next we'll look at how to reconcile the actual results with the budgeted results.